More than a week later, I'm finally able to finish this software update video. Shot it last weekend, something beyond my control. Here we are finishing it off. So yeah, let's do this, shall we? Because we, it's a great update and I really need to address the elephant in the room around the glove box and what do I mean and yeah, why it's still not good. Let's dive into the car control menu and the first thing you're going to notice here is that if there's anything new and hopefully moving forward this is what they're going to do, there's going to be this new icon to indicate well that this feature is new. Very handy along with this search tool so if you're trying to find something you can't remember in which menu it lives just tap up here enter your search term and voila gives you all the results. A good addition, I'm not going to say great addition, is British English has been added to the voice model and I can't remember if it was actually in the previous one for the navigation as well. I always have my navigation audio off so I never listen to the lady or man, whatever the person is, but conversely the language model does appear to be better so in these instances where I've tested out the usual sort of test of phrases, it works pretty damn well. Not always. And when I say that, I even got, because you know, I'm not always the best at now setting my words, I've got my missus to try and uh, she couldn't always get it consistently to work. Nonetheless, I think it is an improvement, thank goodness, on the last build. The next good change, especially for people with vision issues, <laughs> looking at me, maybe it's you, is you can actually increase the font size and it's really subtle. Like I think it's only about 10%, not even. The bolding in some places, the speedometer is bigger as well. But uh, I do wish there was a bit more change or ability to make it bigger here or bolder. I don't know what it needs, but it's still not really that good. Especially like if I take these glasses off, yeah, it's, it's a bit fuzzy. So mm, yeah. Coming down and in the charging menu, the car has disappeared. There used to be like a slider here and now it's, well, there's still a slider, but there's no car with that. Uh, I think it's actually a pretty good change. The visual before was nice and all. I don't really miss it. Do I? Don't I? I'm, I'm not fast, so I don't miss it, I guess. Moving into the bottom menus, and if you jump to theatre, you'll notice that instead of the splash sort of graphics that used to be there, it's now like a, a square icon. I think this is a lot neater looking than it used to be, and uh, I think a good welcome option because they could pave the way for more things. Moving down to the app drawer, and if you tap on the ellipses, it now shows you in this menu all the actual shortcuts you can have for like demist and defrost and more. Another good one for those new to Tesla is getting to know your Tesla. In here it's got some very quick summaries as to okay if you want to do let's say uh, how do you get into the glove box, the actual glove box button is there. Um, not that it really teaches you then how to go through car controls hit on glove box but you get the idea. If you are in the market for a Tesla whatever, you can always use my referral code below or if you're thinking, hey, I want to do a test drive, well, more than a test drive, you can maybe rent my car. It's on EV as well as now on Turo. Use the referral link down below and save yourself some money on your first rental. Next up, and this change I think is pretty good but limited, and that is that when you search for something, say a supercharger destination, there's actually photographs associated with it. Uh, I would do wish if you tapped on those photographs, it would actually maybe enlarge the left hand side to the web browser sort of space. It doesn't at the moment, so you kind of like, especially with these eyes, going, ooh, okay. And uh, yeah, it's a great little feature, and I think it's taking all that power of the, the Google Cloud and uh, serving it up to you where it's possible. A new addition also is that when you search for a destination, it will give you a distance from you, and that little square icon to the right hand side, if you tap on it, it will actually bring up more information about it. It won't necessarily navigate to it. From there, you're just going to press on navigate and well, away it goes. Next up, and something that I learned was that the camera, I mistakenly thought it was to detect the speeds, but no, it turns out it was actually just the data that's compiled within that massive map. Anyway, the camera actually sees speed signs and will adjust, you know, if you're say on autopilot, it will adjust the speed based upon whatever speed sign it sees. Now when you hit drive or go up for reverse, you get a, a confirmation sound and I actually quite like it. Up next is automatic emergency braking and uh, this is I think uh, going to be a great improvement if it works. I went out and I tried with my missus to get it to fire and we did no less than 8 attempts to make this thing uh, 
put the emergency brakes on, you know, like to bring the car to a halt and say, stop. You know, like what it does when you're actually uh, getting into a, like a garage and there's a wall in front of you, that sort of thing. It didn't happen at all. And I kid you not, these, all these attempts were genuine tries and it was absolutely nerve wracking, edging forward and hoping that it's gonna kick in and do what it's supposed to do. So this is for perpendicular situations, that is to say like, a, you know, a car coming across you this way. Think at like traffic lights when um, someone runs a red. Awesome, this is what we need. Uh, but I couldn't get it to work, which doesn't say much. This is just my experience. Perhaps real world, very different. Now a confusing change. In the music player section, that little card down the bottom, they've taken away the heart and now there's this plus symbol. And when you tap on it, it's actually adding it to favorites. And at the moment, I've actually got Apple Music uh, subscription as well as Spotify. Spotify is my normal one, okay? Tapping on it puts it into my favorites for Spotify. But if I was playing music, say in Apple Music and I press that same button, it didn't come across. Now, is that because uh, I've somehow, somewhere, and I can't remember ever doing this, putting Spotify as my default player? I'm not too certain. Maybe you know, comment down below because I'd love to hear from you. Okay, now here's a really exciting one and uh, I can see the potential here. It's got promos and some things are great and some things not so great. And that is the multi-function steering wheel button. The left-hand one has been upgraded. And if you dive through this menu, controls, display, you can now select things like glove box, defrost, dome lights, climate temperature, HVAC fan control, display speed, dash cam video, acceleration mode, steering wheel heat, and backup camera. You'll notice that if you have selected the multifunction steering wheel function, you can actually go to the left to go back to the main menu, re-choose a different option, and then press to the right to enter within it. To use it, all you do is press and hold the button in for two seconds, and whatever you've programmed to that button will happen, which is, well, great, but here's a good example where it's not so great. And that is if I want the dome lights on, I press and hold it and it comes up with, do you want it this in auto or do you want them on or do you want to turn them off? Which kind of seems weird to me because shouldn't it just be a toggle? If the lights are off right now and I prep, if I purposely press and hold that button for two seconds, I want the lights to come on. And then if the lights are on and I press and hold it, I want them to turn off, right? Because on the other menu, save dash cam video, it actually will record a moment. Okay, so again, this is my question. Why is it that with that, it's gonna record it, but with the other one, it's gonna be like, hang on, I want you to actually look down at the screen right now and decide what am I gonna do? Yeah, that's not safe, that's not a good thing to do. Do not do that. But if you're on a phone call, when you're speaking to someone, you just push it to the left and you can actually mute them. You push it to the right and you hang up on them. I did it to my wife. Good times. And one more is that if you press now the wiper stalk in at the end, you can actually use the uh, left and right steering wheel button to select either from off one, two, three, or four to auto, which I think is brilliant, but it's not too much of a reach for your hand to be honest. So the question is, what will you actually program to that button? Now, people who have been watching my 10 things I don't like so much about my Tesla Model Y have been suggesting that, well, why don't you put the button for glove box there? And uh, again, that's just really two seconds too long if you ask me. So what I did, I did an experiment and I actually opened and closed the glove box using first the on-screen buttons and trying to do it as quickly as I could in a minute. And then I did the same thing by pressing and holding the um, button in. And also I used my box. voice. And who do you think is gonna win in this battle? Hey, comment below, comment below. <laughs> you know full well that it's gonna be a manual latch open. Yeah? yeah, again, Tesla's overcomplicating this. And by having two screen button presses to open a glove compartment is one press too many. Pressing and holding for two seconds is way too slow compared to just the normal standard latch. And then conversely, using the voice is way slower again. And then fun fact, in testing this, I discovered that after about ooh, 30, 40 seconds, about 40 seconds, it actually stops ah. opening it. Well then. I think it's a safety thing that they don't want it to wear out maybe. I'm not too sure, I don't understand. But nonetheless, if they have a latch and then if you want to do the pin to lock that thing, yeah, you can have a locking device behind there, sure. 
but yeah, just go watch this video if you want to understand more information about that. All right, well, that was it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, give me a subscribe. Think about supporting the channel through Patreon or YouTube membership or otherwise. You be good and you be green.